I'm joined now by Keith Cowing. He's editor of NASAWatch.com. Thank you for joining us. So, you know, China and Russia have worked together before, but what do you make of this newest collaboration? Well, it's for five years. It covers a wide, very wide range of things, not just human space flight, but uh, space science, earth science, communication satellites, and, and new technology. So uh, it also spans five years. So that's, uh, it, it's more expansive than we've seen before. And it also really seeks to get into the collaboration between the two countries. But it doesn't mention the United States, which is interesting. Well, you know, let's look at some of these dual go goals. You mentioned them, lunar and deep space exploration for one, satellite systems, space debris research. What does each country gain by working with each other on things like these? Well, they gain in the same way that any country that is exploring space gains by working with another country. Space debris is something that anybody who launches a satellite has to worry about. And it's going to be a problem that we all, whether it's China, Russia, Japan, Europe, India, have to deal with. So it's good that they're starting to work together, and one would hope that this would expand further. How difficult is it to share information when you're working with another country and to get on the same page as far as achieving the same goals? You mentioned this five-year time frame. Does everyone have the same goal going in? And what can you get out on the other end? You know, maybe they do, maybe they don't. But there's always people who say you can't do this. And I remember back when I was young, I worked at the uh, uh, factory where they built the space shuttles. And there were people next to me who had worked on the uh, Soyuz project that docked with an American Apollo. And there were people saying, you can't do it. It's impossible. It'll never happen. I worked on the early space station program when we were going to bring the Russians in. They said, oh, you can't do it. It'll never happen. There's always somebody who says you can't do it. But there's always benefits that outweigh whatever risk you might get. And you might want to just look at the International Space Station right now. The international is an important word. Right now, the US and Russia are having all these fights and disagreements. What's the one place you never hear of problems? Above Earth. Exactly. You mentioned Russia and China, and then you said not the United States. Talk about that for a moment, because we know that, as you mentioned, Russia and the US work together. The US technically cannot work with China, but do you see that changing? I do, and usually you'll find out that the reasons you can't do these things are due to one or two politicians getting something added to a bill. And we have some restrictions on working directly with China right now. But we work with the Russians. And the Russians and the Chinese have been working together for years. As a matter of fact, the Chinese have a spacecraft that's based on the same docking standard that the Russians and we use. They could dock tomorrow if it weren't for these politics. And if you talk to folks inside of NASA, they look at the, the value that they've gained from working with Russia. And uh, there's always more than one way to do things. And the more different ways you know how to do things in space, the safer you are. And so bringing China in, there's a lot of folks that would really just jump at the opportunity. But the flip side is, the Russians and the Chinese have a capability to go do stuff without us. And do we want to be left behind? You know, look at Antarctica. There's, how many bases are there down there? So what, many. So what do you hope to see in the future? What is your dream team? And what would you like to see that dream team partner up on? I'd like to see everybody you know, working with everybody else. And right now, it's not impossible. Again, as I said, the docking standards and a lot of the technical things are already internationalized or globalized. That's not the problem. It's wanting to drop these barriers such that you can, you know, every country brings their, their strengths and benefits to the table. And again, like in, with Antarctica, there's not one research station down there. There's dozens. We have five or six. China has. They've figured out how to work together down there peacefully. And some, some countries have big ships, others have airplanes, and so forth. So ideally, I'd like to see any country that wants to be in space to be in space, and that they could bring whatever it is they can bring and work with everybody else to a greater good. You make it sound so simple. Oh, well, you can always hope. All right, Keith Cowing, thank you so much for your time. We appreciate it. Thank you.